Hello everyone. Welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, let's tackle some of the questions which are asked in NSTSE. We'll focus on questions asked in 20 NSTSE 2014 for grade 7. Are we ready? Let's go. This is the first question. Identify the sum of x, y, and z from the following figure. Option A: 180 degree. Option B: 70 degree. Option C: 190 degree. And option D: 80 degree. So, to solve this question. Let's solve each x, y, and z. Now we know that E, B, C, as given the figure, angle E, B, C would is equal to seventy degree. And we can also see that angle A, B, E, and angle E, B, C. are linear pairs that means that angle abe plus angle ebc would be equal to 180 degree so we already know angle ebc so angle abe plus angle ebc which is 70 degree is equal to 180 degree so angle abe would angle abe would be equal to 180 degree and we take plus 70 degree to the other side minus 70 degrees and we get 110 degree now according to the figure we also now know that angle a b d is equal to 150 degrees angle a b d equals 150 degrees and we can also see that angle a b d is equal to angle a b e plus angle angle e b d so we already figured out a angle a b e which is 110 degree and we also know that angle a b d is equal to 150 degree and if we look at the figure we see that angle e b d is marked as x So we can replace all of these so angle ABD is 150 degrees so angle ABE which is 110 degrees plus x would be equal to 150 degrees and we can take 110 to the other side we get x equal to is equal to 150 degrees minus 110 degrees which is equal to 40 degrees let's mark it in the figure x equals 40 degrees now if we look at the figure we see that line ae is parallel line segment ae is parallel to line segment bd and e b d and be is the transversal be is the transversal Now if we extend AE BD
and let's look at the angles x and y now these both are alternate interior angles alternate interior angles so if the if two lines are parallel and a transversal is passing between them and the alternate interior so the alternate interior angles would be equal so x would be equal to y now we have already figured out x which is 40 degrees so y would also be equal to 40 degrees so let's mark it in the figure y is 40 degrees now we see that line segment BE and is parallel to line segment CD and AC is the line segment that is the transversal now if we look at angle ABE and angle C we can see that they are corresponding angles so we, so corresponding angles are always equal if the lines are parallel so angle ABE is equal to angle Z and we have already figured out angle ABE as 110 degrees so angle Z would also be equal to 110 degrees now we have to find the sum of x y and z which is equal to x plus y plus z equals 40 plus 40 plus 110 degrees which is equal to 190 degrees which is option c 190 degrees let's move on to the next question 1 by 2 is subtracted from a number and the difference is multiplied by 4. If 25 is added to the product and the sum is divided by 3, the result is equal to 10. Find the number. Option A 3 by 5, Option B 1 3 by 4, Option C 6 by 7 and Option D 2 by 3. Now, for this question, we have to do reverse operations. So, we have to start from the result and then go back to statement by statement. So, let's mark the statements. 1 by 2 subtracted, uh, multiplied by 4, 25 is added, divided by 3. Now let's start from the result. So the result is 10 to find the initial number. So the result is 10 and the previous statement we have is it is divided by 3. Now the reverse of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. So 10 multiplied by 3 is 30. So let's take the next as 30 and then let's look at the previous statement 25 is added now the opposite of 25 being added is 25 being subtracted from so 30 minus 25 is equal to 5 and next statement is multiplied by 4 now the opposite of multiplied by 4 is divided by 4 so 5 by 4 and then the last statement is 1 by 2 is subtracted from number that's the number we are going to find so if 1 by 2 is subtracted that means we have to add 1 by 2 now if we multiply 1 into 2 2 into 2 we get 5 by 4 plus 2 by 4 
5 plus 2 is equal to 7, 7 by 4. Now, if we convert 7 by 4 into mixed fractions, we get 1, 3 by 4, which is option B. So, option B, 1, 3 by 4, is the correct answer for this question. Next question. In triangle ABC, if AB plus BC is equal to 10 cm, BC plus CA is equal to 12 cm, CA plus AB is equal to 16 cm, what is its perimeter? Option A, 19 cm, Option B, 17 cm, and op Option C, 38 cm, and Option D, 30 cm. Now, Let's look at the sides that would be present in triangle ABC. Now, in triangle ABC, the points are A, B, and C, and there are three sides, so the sides that can be formed are A, B, B, C, and C, A. Then, let's look at the statements A, B plus B, C equals 10 cm, BC plus CA equals 12 cm, and CA plus AB equals 16 cm. Now, if we add all of them, so AB plus BC plus BC plus CA plus CA plus AB would be equal to 10 plus 12 plus 16. Now, if we look at the equation in the left-hand side, we can see that all the sides of triangle ABC is being repeated two times. So, AB, AB, BC, BC, CA, CA. So, we can rewrite this as 2 into, in the brackets, a B plus B C plus C A would be equal to 10 plus 12 plus 16 which is equal to 38 now the perimeter of a triangle is the sum of the length of its sides so the perimeter of triangle A B C would be equal to A B plus B C plus C A so in order to obtain this from the equation we have formed, then we have to cancel out 2 into. So we divide by 2, we get AB plus BC plus CA is equal to 38 divided by 2, which is equal to 19 centimeter. Because we are finding centimeters, the unit is important. So, the correct answer is option A, 19 centimeter. Let's move to the next question. How many primes between 1 and 1000 are divisible by 13? Option A, 14. Option B, 1. Option C, 246. And option D, 0. First, let's analyze what is a prime number. A prime number is the number that is divisible by 1 and the number itself only. So, this means the only factors of each prime number are 1 and the number itself. Now, let's look at the prime numbers from the beginning. The prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, so on. Since 13 is the only prime number between 
1 and 1000 divisible by 13 option B is correct option since there is only one prime number 13 let's move on to the last question a pudding is made of 200 gram sugar 800 gram eggs 600 gram flour and 200 gram dry fruits what percentage of sugar is present in the pudding option a 11 1 by 9 percentage option b 16 2 by 3 percentage option c 6 1 by 4 percentage option d 3 1 by 2 percentage now let's look at what we have to find now we have to find the percent of sugar present in the pudding now first let's find the fraction of sugar present in the pudding so the fraction would be equal to amount of sugar by total amount so the amount of sugar is 200 gram by over total num total amount so including sugar so 200 plus 800 plus 600 plus 200 so 200 plus 800 is 1000 1000 plus 600 is 1600 1600 plus 200 is 1800 so it will be 200 by 1800 we can cancel the two zeros in the numerator and den denominator so we get 2 by 18 B both are divisible by 2 so 2 by 2 is 1 and 18 by 2 is 9 we get 1 by 9 to find the percentage we have to multiply it by 100 so 1 by 9 into 100 so it will be 1 by 9 to 100 by 1 is equal to 100 by 9 now the number the last number before 100 divisible by 9 is 99 so it is 11 so I had to convert this to mixed fraction so the last number before 100 divisible by 9 is 99 99 by 9 is 11 so 100 minus 99 is 1 so 11 1 by 9 percentage which is option A 11 1 by 9 percentage is the right answer and that ends this episode of NSDSC we hope you learn something new for more useful videos please subscribe to our channel brain blitz audios and press the notification icon until the next episode take care stay safe tata -ta for now